Hey guys, welcome back to Light Inside Cinema. If you've been thinking about leveling up your editing skills or just making the switch to DaVinci Resolve, I know it can be like, it can seem like a beast of a program at first glance, but don't let that scare you off because it is packed with features that can totally revolutionize the way that you edit. Now, I'm not here to pretend I know everything about DaVinci Resolve. In fact, I'm still learning new tricks every day, but that's exactly why I'm excited to walk you through this. If you're ready to dive in and want a guide to help you navigate without feeling overwhelmed, you're in the right place. Before we get started, I have some exciting news. I'm giving away a studio copy of DaVinci Resolve along with the speed editor, and I'll be announcing the winner on August 30th right here on the channel. And to enter, all you have to do is just click the link in the description box below. It's completely free, guys. All right, enough of the intro. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and get you editing like a pro. Welcome to DaVinci Resolve. If this home screen has you feeling a bit lost, don't sweat it. I've got your back. And by the end of this, you'll be navigating like a pro. To get started, we're going to go ahead and come in here to our web browser and we're going to type in www.blackmagic.com design.com and right when you're in here you're going to click on products you're going to click on davinci resolve software and here's where you can make your selection of where you want to go you can either purchase the davinci resolve studio which is a one-time payment of 295 and it's done or you can download the free version of davinci resolve and you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on the operating system that you're working on. For me, I'm working on Mac OS. And up here, this is the free version. This right here is going to be your studio version. All right, so you installed your DaVinci Resolve, and now you're opening it up for the first time. When you open up Resolve, you're greeted by the home screen, and it's packed with features that can seem overwhelming at first glance, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you break it down, and we're gonna do so. Over on the right, you've got your projects. This is where all your editing work lives. Think of these as your little digital workshops. Each one is a project you're working on or you just finished. You can organize these by creating folders for example, you might want to have one folder for all your YouTube content or Facebook content and another one for your client work or whatever categories make sense for you. It's all about keeping your workspace clean and easy to manage. As I stated, organization is key, guys. The more organized you are, the better your workflow and the more streamlined your workflow will be. Right click and we can click on new folder. We're going to let that do its thing. Or you could click on this. This is a simple way of doing a new folder. And we can name this YouTube. And we'll say create. Well, I already have one existing. We'll say YouTube folder create. All right. On the left hand side, you'll see the database section. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting because the database is basically the brain of the operation or the brain of resolve. It's where all your projects are stored. And if you need to locate where those files live on your computer, all you have to do is right click on the database, choose reveal in finder or explore if you're on a PC, and then you'll see exactly where everything is tucked away. It's really a great lifesaver, trust me. If you're the type who likes to keep things backed up or if you need to move projects around, trust me, this is the way to go, okay? All right, now here's a very neat trick for you guys. If you're juggling different types of projects, let's say you've got your personal work, client projects, or maybe a few experiments, you can create separate databases for each one, all you have to do is click add project library and, you know, give it a name and you're good to go. Here's the other cool feature on the home screen. You can export 
And exporting is another powerful feature here. Let's say you want to save a project file separately or you need to send it over to a collaborator. All you have to do is just right click on your project and you hit export project and then you choose where to save it. And if you're looking to archive a whole project, you know, or project in full with footage, music, and all the bells and whistles, you can use the export project archive option. And this will just bundle everything together in one neat package. And it's just perfect for all the long-term storage. I mean, you can build up a lot of storage over time. And here's a quick heads up. If you ever find yourself stuck inside a folder and can't figure out how to get back to the main projects view, all you have to do is just click on the project button at the top. It might not look like a button, but trust me, it, it'll it take you right back. It, it is a button. I don't know why it doesn't look like a button, but it is. One thing I haven't figured out yet, it, it, on if there's a way to turn off all the effects before opening a project, I'm still on the hunt for that. If I crack that code, I'll be sure to share it with you because something happened to me and I'll explain it to you here in a bit. But for now, let's keep moving forward. Now, let's dive into the editing page because this is where most of the magic happens. And here's a quick rundown of the pages before we start. At the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see a bunch of different icons and we're gonna run through these really quickly. The first one right here is your media pool. This is where you store and organize your footage. You might not use this tab extensively because I don't. Everything can be done in the editing tab, but it is handy to manage your media assets because you got everything right here. You can create folders, etc. Here is your cut page. This is a streamlined interface for quick edits. I personally don't use it much at all but it's useful for rapid cutting of simple edits. I want you to think like Premiere Pro Rush, where you're just trying to get a project out quick. That's what this page is made for. And I, I just don't use it that much. Everything I do is mainly right here on the edit page. And that brings us to the edit page where this is gonna be the, the heart of your editing workflow. Here you can assemble your clips, make detailed edits and fine tune your projects. And right here is gonna be considered your fusion page. And the fusion page, I want you to think of it like DaVinci Resolve version of After Effects. It is great for complex visual effects, but I'm still learning it myself. I know a little bit just because I understand the color grading aspect of the no tree, but I still tend to steer towards After Effects. Right here is your color page. This page offers powerful color grading tools, and it is a major reason why many editors switch to Resolve. You know, it's just thanks to its exceptional color control and its nonlinear platform. Yeah, I just absolutely love this page. Then right here, is your Fairlight page. This is where you can handle all your audio post-production and it is packed with tools for sound design. I don't, I don't really use it that much. I normally do a lot of my audio editing inside the edit page or I have a separate audio designer that's absolutely incredible that will do it for me. But it's here for you guys. And the one thing you can do if you have the studio version you can download the sound library. And this is incredible add-on for DaVinci Resolve. It's literally like an all-in-one shop. It has all the sound effects you want. So you could type in here footsteps and it'll bring up footsteps you can add to your audio timeline. And we'll go through this page a little bit further, a little bit later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. All right, so the last page here is your deliver page, and this is where you can export and render your final projects. It's very straightforward and efficient for getting your videos out into the world. Trust me, they, they make it so simplified, and we'll go through that later on in the video as well. Now, let's focus on the edit page where you're gonna spend most of your time. In order to get your project set up, down here, this is your home page. This is how you can get back to your projects, and Ooh, I'm opening up everything. 
This right here is your settings page. Now you can also go into that by going into your file and go to project settings and it will bring up all your settings. With your color management, uh, before you even color grade, I'll, I'll go into this, but your timeline color space is what your camera is seeing and what your monitor is putting out saying, this is what your camera is seeing. And this is your output color space. Essentially, it's what your monitor is seeing. So I always keep this Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And then my timeline color space, I love working in Asus CCT or DaVinci Wide Gamut. So I always try to pick that. And DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is an absolutely beast of a color space to work in. To set up your lookup tables, make sure this is set to tetrahedral. And then you can also make broadcast safe by clicking this. And that's all you need on here for your project settings. And lastly, I want to show you guys in DaVinci Resolve underneath your preferences. When you come in here, you can click where you want your media stored. And right now I have it set to my movies tab, but if you have an external hard drive, which these are all my external hard drives, you can click which one you want and it will save the backups and save everything to that hard drive. Underneath your user settings, make sure that this is not checked, reload last working project on startup because I've ran into issues where, you know, if there was a crash, it will reload the project with the effects on, and it's definitely not smart to keep this on. Underneath your project save and load, we're gonna make sure that your uh, save settings are on live save, so it automatically saves. Make sure that your project back check backups is checked and I always keep this around 10 minutes and your hourly backups for the past two hours. This is your backup location where you can pick and select where you want your project backups to live. I keep this at the same folder where the storage is laying, if that makes sense. Okay, we're going to talk about importing media now. You can do this in multiple different ways. You can open the media pool by clicking on the tab or press shift plus two and it will take you straight here to your media pool or you can import your media just simply by dragging your files from your file explorer or your launch pad into your media pool this just keeps everything organized so we're just going to click on everything from today that i shot and we're just going to drag it in here all right one last thing before we get into the smart bins I want to make sure that everything is set up correctly. Again, I forgot to mention that you want to check the smart bins for timelines and automatic smart bins for people metadata. This will help organize your footage even better. So we're just going to go ahead and save. And here's where all your smart bins live. And in order to create a smart bin, you can right click right here and you can say add smart bin. Now, you could set your criteria right here and define the criteria for your smart bin, like file type, date, resolution, or metadata. And literally it has everything on here, your audio, your camera, and it just keeps everything so organized. What smart bins can also do is automatic sorting. See, your smart bins will now automatically sort your clips that meet the criteria that you set. It'll keep your project tidy and easy to navigate and it works like a charm, especially after you're done, you can delete all the unused clips and just keep it very, very tidy. Next, we're gonna go into keyboard shortcuts and to get into this, you go into your DaVinci Resolve up here in the left-hand side corner and you're gonna click on keyboard customization and right when you get into the keyboard customization, you can change it by you know, what you're used to working on. Say Premiere, it has Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts or Final Cut. So it literally can replicate all the shortcuts that you're used to. And it's a game changer for speeding up your workflow. And I'm going to give you guys a little breakdown of some of the essential ones, like opening and closing media pool. All you have to do is just press tab to toggle the media view. 
Now, this is all set to the DaVinci Resolve shortcuts. Let me just say that straight up because I've never really changed my shortcuts that much. Once you have your keyboard customization set to your preference, you now can go in here and start editing your footage. So we're going to come in here and we're going to drag and drop our first clip. Now, there's several different ways you can bring in your clips. You can either drag and drop it. You can come in here and the standard in and out points, you can say I and O, and you can drag and drop it that way. Or you could click on here and it'll just bring in the video, or you could just bring in the audio from it. For basic trimming, Q is your trim to trim the start of a clip. E is trim the end of a clip, and W is split or cut a clip. I have this set up right now where B is my blade tool, and technically the only shortcuts I ever use, guys, is a b and r <laughs> so b is your blade tool where you can cut and you can press command z to undo it a is your selection tool and that's all i mainly use i, I don't know why i just haven't really got into all the other shortcuts as i said you know set it up to your liking and not to mine for customization though up here is your magnet tool so what this does is that it's kind of like Final Cut to where it'll automatically lock to a clip and make sure that you don't cut. And if you turn that off, you can easily bring it into another clip. When it's linked, it will bring the whole clip over that has the audio attached to it. If you don't want the audio kind of synced up, you can click on this and it will bring the audio. The cool feature about this is let's say that you don't have it linked it will tell you how far out of sync that you are on your clip. So we talked about setting out points. Your comma is to append the selection to the end of the timeline. Your playback controls, J is to play backwards. So if we come in here and it, it will play your, your clip backwards here. You could press K to stop or you could press L to play forward. Now to change your clip speed, you can right click and you can say read time controls or you can press R and it will change your clip clip speed here. You can do a freeze frame, you can reverse your speed here. Like it's amazing what you can do with that feature. Now with read time control though, if you come in here and you press command plus, this is your zoom in command minus is my zoom out. You can add speed points like we were talking about in the previous video and do speed ramping. Very easy to do. For your ripple delete, you're gonna click X and this just deletes a gap or a clip and it moves all the subsequent clips together. And your snap tool, you could click S and it'll toggle snap on, snap off to align the clips precisely all right applying effects and keyframing in your inspector tab which is right here this is your inspector tab kind of like your premiere where you're going to see everything on your left hand side your inspector tab this is where you can adjust all your video settings like your zoom your positioning and you can also use the keyframe buttons to animate your timing of your clip so like if you want to do some fancy animations you can click on this and say okay i want to do a zoom in and boom now when you click on it it will do a subtle play in but there's an easier method for it and that's called dynamic zoom and that is right here and what this does is that it takes the math work of doing keyframes out or the hard work of doing all the keyframes and you can click linear, ease in, ease out, or ease in and ease out. When you have your clip on here, it will do a slight move in according to the clip length. The shorter your clip, the, the faster it's going to move. Now we can do an ease out and what it's going to do is just do a zoom in. Now, adding effects. DaVinci Resolve offers built-in effects. If you have the studio version, you'll get a lot more. But on the free version, you're kind of limited. 
but it's still the basic essentials that you need just to get by, you know? That's why I say, you know, the free version is more than enough. Let's talk about proxy media and timeline management. If your computer struggles with high resolution footage like mine does, you can generate proxy media. You can generate proxy media in several different ways. The easiest way is you can come back into your media pool and you can right click on the thing and you can say generate proxy media and this will help you have a more smoother playback. The other way is you can come in here to your launch pad and click Blackmagic Proxy Generator and it will bring this tab up and this is an external plugin and you can click on the clips or the folder by clicking add and uh, bringing up the folder that you want to create the proxy media at and you just press start but anyway it just helps your computer out breathe a little bit and it'll make it better for you for editing where you're not going to have a choppy playback because when you're pressing play you can see what your frame rate is when it's playing back and right now i'm playing back at a full 23 976. now let's say that you're lagging even more you could come in here and go to playback and go to proxy handling and you have to say prefer proxies and it will work off your proxies the only time you really need to work on preferred camera originals is if you're color grading. Uh, your timeline proxy resolution, you can put this down to half or quarter and it will help speed up your editing workflow and give it more of a smoother playback for you guys. To manage your multiple timelines and projects, all you have to do is, well, let's say that you want to view multiple timelines. You can view multiple timelines by clicking the timeline right here. And you can select stacked timelines right here. With this being open, it will help you to work with several timelines simultaneously. Now it's time to talk about one of my favorite parts of editing, guys. Well, I, I say that. I don't really like it that much, but it's, it's there. Sound design, right? DaVinci Resolve has an entire custom suite dedicated to sound design called Fairlight. And it has a sound library you can download, which is fantastic. It's an all-in-one shop. However, for today, we're just going to focus on sound editing right in the edit page due to time. Because I do not want this to be over a three-hour video, and it can easily be. Yeah, so with that being said sound editing in the edit page. You could do everything here. So viewing an audio waveform. If you ever encountered issues where you can't see your audio waveforms, you can go to your timeline view options and make sure that the audio waveforms are toggled on. You can also adjust how the waveforms are displayed for, you know, better visibility. You can navigate to your SFX library right here. You can drag and drop uh, different sounds that's already on here, like we were talking about earlier, like footsteps and there it is we got footsteps it's all about what fits your project adjusting audio levels unlike premiere resolve doesn't have a direct shortcut for adjusting gain but you can do it right here on the clip or you can come in here to your inspector tab and go to your volume and you can select it here or you can even double click and type in a certain audio so let's say negative six and press enter and it'll keep it right here at negative six. Now to create smooth audio fades, let's say that you have a music file and you want a smooth audio fade. You can come in here and literally it's right here on your sound clip. It's just genius. And you can adjust the, the curvature of your fade right here. You can add different transitions to, to uh, the audio files. You can even add a transition like, you know, cross dissolve which are right here where you could cross dissolve or cross fade to a negative three. For this purpose, I don't normally use it. Now, here's another genius thing. As far as cross fade, you can even go in here. You can right click where the clips meet and you can even say add six frame cross fade zero dB. And what that's going to do is add a transition. And for this instance, we're just going to trim the clip. And now, 
it'll give you a, a smooth playback between the two clips and you can actually see it right here. So that's an easy way of adding transitions. Now, just like the video that we were mentioning, the video clips with the smart bins, you can do that for sound as well, which will keep everything tidy and organized. You can create a smart bin to automatically sort all your sound effects, music tracks, voice recordings, all based on metadata, etc. So you can come in here, you can just add a smart bin by it, and we can say audio. And we'll just go metadata audio, audio recorder, and we'll keep it at contains. Okay? And that's all you need to do. And it'll create everything, it'll sort everything for you. All right, here's a little hidden trick, and this is something I learned. We're gonna drag and drop a song onto our timeline. And right now, it's, it's very, very long, right? Let's just say that we want to start it right here and we want to end it right here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a good beat and we'll do right here. And we're just gonna press B right onto our timeline. We're gonna do A and we're gonna bring this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and blade it up and just cut it. So right when you have this duplicated and you come down here, we're gonna do right click, new compound clip, and let's create it. We're gonna drag and drop a reverb on it. And I normally keep this uh, spacing around a 75 worth but you could play around with it uh to get your liking on it and then for your reverb time i normally keep it around 1755 and then my uh wet dry mix at 51 ish we'll put we'll probably bring it up just a little okay and we're gonna right click we're going to say open in timeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold down your option again. And we're just going to bring this down. We're going to bring this out. And we're going to right click again. And we're going to press enable. Now your shortcut for enable is D. So you can enable clips that way. And then right here is your timeline or you can come back into your timeline from what we already did on the stack timelines now what we can do is we can extend this out and instead what's going to do is it's going to give a nice fade to it you hear that it's amazing double we can um we'll click on this and we'll press command and we'll click on this. And then we can just go right click and then you'll say auto sync audio and you'll click on waveform. It works wonders. And it's the easiest thing to do to sync up all your audio before you put it on the timeline. Or you could come in here and drag and drop it, find your audio file, which this is definitely not it. And you can right click on this and you can say auto aligned clips based on waveform. Now, if you're running time code, you can also do it that way as well. All right, adding audio effects. To enhance your voice recordings, you can use a limiter, compressor, and EQ. So on here, you can adjust your EQ, and it's just got some basic features to use. Now, if you come into the Fairlight tab, it does have more advanced features, I'm just gonna jump into the Fairlight page, guys, and I'm gonna show you guys some neat tricks here for your audio editing, because, I mean, Blackmagic has literally thought it out. So on your dynamics, you can click, double click on this and bring in your dynamics, and you can actually click on a preset that's already made for it, and I like using the Dialog Leveler Expander, and it just, makes it sound really good. I'm not like an audio genius when it comes to video, but this is what works for me. You can double click on your EQ and it has different presets as well. I normally keep it right here because obviously it's a male and it, it gives you a fine tune for your dialogue. 
okay? And there's other features you can add in here, like your distortion dynamics, you got stereo fixer, stereo width, and you got your metering. Uh, typically, on your metering, you'll see right here on your target, on your loudness itself, you want to stick with your dialogue around negative six is what I normally keep it around. And I think that's what standard dialogue levels are supposed to be. I know each distribution platform is different, which there's an easy way to actually target the overall loudness near the end of video. I will show you how to do that. Now, here's another nifty trick. Let's say that you want to apply the effects from the audio onto another clip that you have in your timeline, right? So let's say we're going to drag and drop this and we want this audio. We're going to press Command C. We're going to come in here and we're going to press Option V. This will bring up this pop-up menu and we're just going to do Audio Attributes and it will adjust all your effects that you have from this clip onto this one. It's pretty easy. Now, let's dive into my absolutely favorite part of editing, and that's color grading. I just love it. I just absolutely love it. For this selection, I want to give a big shout out to Akaz Kazi's YouTube channel. What's up, guys? This is Kazi. Welcome back to another video. I've been grading for 14 years. He has a master class on color correction and grading, which is incredible, and it taught me everything I know. And if you're serious about improving your coloring skills, definitely check out his course through the link below in the description box. Trust me, it's worth every penny. They even do contests every week on a private Facebook group. It's just amazing what you can learn from it. And from that, we're going to go into the color page basics and, you know, just to get started. We're going to come into the color page here and... We're going to find a good clip to color grade. We'll just keep it right around here. Now, let's talk about this, okay? When you click on the color tab to open the color grading workspace, you'll see the clip right here in the viewer in a series of controls on the right. These are what we call nodes. And I want to go into what nodes versus layers are. I want you to think of nodes like building blocks in the align. Each node processes your clip in a different way, and you can connect them to create a sequence of adjustments. It's like building a recipe step by step, left to right, versus Premiere or After Effects, it runs in layers where it's, you know, top to bottom. Nodes are just more flexible and intuitive, and it lets you adjust the order and makes changes very easily. Now, adding and deleting your nodes. You can add nodes by pressing Option S or Alt S on a PC. And these new nodes, these are what we call serial nodes. Not like a box of serial, but actual serial nodes. And you can also right click on these to create a serial node right here. Now you can add a serial node before uh, that one, or you can just quickly add another one. You can press delete. For this instance, we're going to use three nodes. So we'll just do option S again. Okay. And just adding and deleting nodes are very, very simple. Um, you can also delete a node by pressing alt backspace, or you can just click delete. All right. For this instance, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. And now that the project's set up, we're going to go ahead and click A. And we want to keep these organized as much as possible. So we'll put in, in R. My keyboard is not liking me. And then we're going to press Option S. We'll cl create another one and we'll do CST me. There it goes. So we're going to create uh, several different nodes. And we're just going to do a simple color correction nothing too fancy uh i don't really like LUTs that much or lookup tables so i like creating my own but if you have the studio version you will have access to film looks and these things are incredible to get you a good start off on your grade a lot of major movies are using the kodak 2383 
And, you know, you can emulate that so well. It's absolutely incredible. So now that we have our CST, we're going to go ahead and go to your effect, color space, transform, add. And since we have this set up to DaVinci wide gamut, we'll put input gamma. Well, so right here underneath your color space transform, we're going to make sure that you have your timeline color space accurate. So we're going to come in here. And since this was shot in Sony, and it was shot in basic Rec. 7 to 9, we're just going to put Rec. 7 to 9, uh, Gamma 2.4, and we're going to convert this to DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. And then on our last one, we can come in here first. Let's go back to our first node, press com uh, Command C, and then we'll press Command V. And then all we have to do in here is go back to our effects tab and reverse it. So we're going to do uh, DaVinci Divi Divi Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and then we're going to go Rec. 7 and 9, Gamma 2.4. And there you have it, guys. Now you have a basic Rec. 7 and 9 to work with. And the Rec. 7 and 9 is a lot smaller of a color space. So my advice is don't work after the Rec. 709, work before, because this is what's giving you the, the most bang for your buck, DaVinci Wide Gamut uh, color space. And this is what you're working in right now is your DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. Anything after this, you're in your Rec. 709, you know, compressed color space. We're just going to create a simple color correction. And to do so, we're going to come in here and we're going to look at our, our scopes. And right here on your settings button, make sure that you put show skin tone indicator. And the last thing is coming in here to your three dot and clicking on display qualifier focus. What that does is it will bring in uh, circles and it'll show you exactly where your color is lying right there. And it's very, very helpful. Right now on my skin tone indicator, it shows I'm more into the red. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a basic correction by just shifting my gamma over ever so slightly. And taking out that, that red. And now I'm pretty lined up to my skin tone indicator. Here's your saturation. So if you want to add a little saturation, you can. And here's your contrast. Uh, to add contrast a little bit more organically, I like to use my curves. And you can create different points for it. Normally, your skin tones lie right around here. And I'm just going to create one more. Okay. So for this, this is your shadow side. So we can add just a little bit of contrast to the image. We're going to go ahead and just create a simple look. And to do so... We're going to go in here and we're just going to use our primaries for the look. So, and for this, we're going to name this our look. And then we're going to name this our shadow. And then we're going to say look adjustment. Okay. So for your look, we're going to do a simple teal and orange. We're going to bring this down to, I'm not going to push it too much, but We'll do something like that. And then we're going to bring this up to counter it. We're just going to bring it back. So now we got this teal and orange look going on. And we're going to come into our shadows and we're going to offset it. And we're going to take a look at our scopes. Don't trust your eyes, guys. Trust your scopes. Your scopes are more accurate than your eyes. That's the one thing I can point out to you. We're just going to bring this up. And you can notice right here what what it's doing. When it's all in the white, it's saying that you are in pure black. And for your midtones, I'm just going to correct it just a little and bring a little bit more warmth to the image by just bringing it over ever so slightly. Okay. And then for my look adjustment, I'm just going to come in here to my printer lights 
and I'm going to bring this down ever so slightly. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here to our hue versus hue. And we're going to bring it up. So I really like the look of the more of the orangey feel to it. And we're going to come in here to our hue versus saturation. And I'm just going to dial it back to, let's say, around 90-ish. And then our reds, we're going to dial this back to like 92, 91, something like that. Okay. And we're going to create one more node and we're going to go in here and type in glow. If you guys do have the studio version, you guys can have these effects. The free version doesn't have this, but this just adds something subtle to everything and it's just amazing. So you can click on soft light and we'll bring this back all the way. And, you know, you can add a little bit more warmth to your highlights by just bringing this in ever so slightly. Now, I know this is very heavy, so we're going to bring this back to probably like a 220. And then you could toggle the single node on and off by command D right here. Now, to turn off and turn on your whole grade, you press Option D. And it will tell you before, well, it will show you a before and after of where you're at right now. And lastly, let's go ahead and um, I want to show you guys one last thing that DaVinci Resolve 19 has. And it's mind-blowing what it does. And that is defocus. This thing, I... I I just can't put in words how mind-blowing this little feature really is. And to use this, what I do is that you can create a window. And seeing that you just have a talking head, you know, you just need something for it to reference. And I'm going to give it a nice little angle here. And then I'm going to bring up my softness to like 35. Boom. Boom. And you can adjust these parameters right here. So let's say that you don't want that much blur in the background, or you do. Right here is pretty good. And then we can go into our advanced settings. And uh, if you want it to look more of an anamorphic look, you can bring this up. Your highlights, you can protect your highlights. Um, and you can add more depth by in your color grade by adding a little bit of teal in there, but that just it's a stylized look, you know. You, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, and you can preview your mask right here. You can actually blur your mask ever so slightly to give it more of an organic feel. I mean, look at this roll off. It's it's stunning. Um. Anyway, that's another little hidden nugget that I like to use now, and it's absolutely incredible. Here's the other thing you can do in the color page. You can press Command and right-click, and you can add it into a group. Let's say that you have close-ups or your wide shots. You can add this into a specific group, and what this does is that uh, you can start your grade right here doing your color space transform and it will apply it globally across every shot that you have in the group and on your post clip you can do the same and it will apply the look simultaneously throughout the whole entire thing that you have on your groups. On your clip page this is just an individual clip level okay and then you have your timeline where this actually applies it to everything that's on your timeline um, instead of just on your group okay you can also come in here and let's just say that you want to match this look from here we're going to come back into our clips you can actually right click and say you don't want it in a group you can press remove and Let's say that this is uh there's a lot of clips like this on the same exact shot. 
instead of having to manually command C and bring in all your looks from everything, you can actually right click and say, use remote grades. And what this does is that if you have multiple of this clip on your timeline, it will work throughout the whole entire line. Okay. There's so much you can go into on in, uh, the color space. And I know I just don't have time to share with you. Otherwise it'll be an extremely long video, but these are just some of the stuff to get you guys started. There's just so many nuggets that you can, you can do real quick though, before uh, we go on, I'll show you my noise reduction settings. If it's very, very noisy, I'll put this at three. I never go higher than three. I'll put this at better. And my highest setting that I ever done was 10.8. And then I unlink this and I bring this into 13.8 or 14. That's the highest I've ever done. Make sure that your noise reduction is before everything, okay? And it just applies it more organically. And then at the end of your timeline, you can add sharpness back because what it does on noise reduction is it takes away from your sharpness of your video. So you gotta add it back and you don't need to go ham on this. So on your blur settings, you'll bring this down and I keep it around 46, 47. And that just adds my sharpness back. And there you have it. This is just a quick overview to get you guys started. But for more in-depth techniques and tips, remember to check out Lakaz Kazi's masterclass. It's an invaluable resource for mastering color correction and grading. And he just released these new awesome QT tools where you can look at it in the description box below and make your purchase. It's amazing, guys. It will change your whole aspect of coloring. Now, when you're ready to export your project and your project is locked in picture lock, DaVinci Resolve offers a range of advanced settings to ensure your final product looks exactly how you intend. Here's how to make the most of all these options. So we're going to go into the delivery page here. And on the top here, you're going to see a bunch of presets and my computer's thinking. So you have H.264, H.265, ProRes, YouTube, Vimeo. These are just pre-made presets that come with DaVinci. And we're going to show you how to create your own presets. So let's say you have a wedding video that's going out to something, or uh, you have a YouTube video that's going out to something else. You can create individual presets that work for each platform. For most projects, I prefer QuickTime with H.264 codecs. It just balances quality and file sizes effectively. Your aspect ratio and your resolution, it will be shown right here. And your encoding profile. The only thing I really change is, let's say you have a 4K timeline. I keep it at 80,000 KBS. And for 1080, I keep it around 40,000. This just gives me the best overall quality for the video. And that's what I like to stick with. You guys can adjust it to your liking, okay? And everything else I keep at auto. Now, let's go down to advanced settings. This is where the magic shines. Color space and gamma settings. And for the best color accuracy, it all depends on the, where you're exporting to. Let's just say that you're exporting to Facebook. You're gonna want to click on Rec 709 and you're gonna click on uh, sRGB. This here will eliminate that gamma shift that you normally see in a lot of your video exports. On social media, you know, they like to compress the crap out of it and they stick to an sRGB color space. Now, if you're working for broadcast or TV, you can go back in here and do gamma 2.4 or you could do P3 if you're doing theatrical. Before we move on, the last two things you want to make sure you have checked is force sizing to highest quality and force the Bayer to highest quality. Lastly, let's go to your audio settings. On my codec, what I like to use is linear PCM and 48,000 and keep this at 24. This is another feature that I really love. So if you're exporting to, let's say YouTube, you can click on this 
And this is where I was talking about, about your audio target loudness for overall. You could click on normalize to standard here and put your standard to YouTube and it will target your level and your loudness, which is your overall loudness to its standards on YouTube. Okay. It's absolutely awesome. Now to save this as a preset, you can come up here to your three dots and you could say save as new preset and you could type in YouTube master and you could press okay. And what it does now is if you come in here, it will automatically have your settings the way that you like it. Absolutely incredible. Okay. Now, when you're ready to export, you'll just press add to render queue. You'll save it to where you want it and you press render all. And then you simply click start render to begin exporting. DaVinci Resolve's export process is known for its speed and efficiency compared to other softwares. You can test exports as well. And it is a good idea to run test exports to verify your settings. You can just create a short clip down here and export instead of exporting the whole project you can have it in and out point by doing your i and o and then export it so you can really test the the color settings and everything to make sure the quality and everything is up to par to what you're wanting and it'll just speed up your export workflow as well instead of having to export the whole entire timeline here's where you could render entire timeline or in and out functions if you want to just render out an individual clips instead of a whole timeline, this will render out all the individual clips, like all the cuts into individual files. By mastering these export settings, you'll ensure your final video looks its best across all platforms. And guys, remember to enter in that contest if you guys want to win. A DaVinci Resolve Studio and Speed Editor is going on again till August 30th. The winner will be selected here on the channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and click that notification button for future content, practice, and create.